Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you now and we ask for you to touch our hearts. Touch them, dear Heavenly Father, through your holy word as it is preached to us because it isn't the messenger, but it should always be the message that you desire for us to hear. And then we pray that you would bless us, enable us, and empower us to carry through on your word and to actually do what it is that you have called us to do to your glory and to the benefit of many who as of yet have not come to know and believe in you through your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we always pray. Amen. A game warden was paying specific attention to fishermen that were coming and going, and there was always one man that brought back more fish than all of the other fishermen combined. And so obviously he was leery and he was inquisitive, and so he decided to accompany this fisherman just to to see where he was fishing uh, because he knew that he had to have some kind of method uh, in regard to his catching all of these fish. So he went with him and he, this fisherman navigated his way around a lagoon and dropping anchor, he opened up his tackle box and he withdrew a stick of dynamite and he lit the fuse. And obviously the, the game warden was just simply dumbfounded. The man held the, the stick of dynamite until the fuse got down and he hurled it just before it got to the water, it detonated, and all of these dead fish and stunned fish came up to the surface, and so he proceeded to use his net and scoop all of them up into his boat. Well, obviously, you can uh, fully understand as to what the warden's reply was. His reply was, stop, stop, this is outrageous, it's illegal, you can't fish this way. And as the game warden continued to rail on and on, the fisherman took out another stick of dynamite, lit it, and handed it to the warden and said, are you going to stop talking or are you going to start fishing? (laughs) Now that, 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 you probably have heard that before. It's been around for a while. I mean, you and I, I'm using the gospel lesson as, my message, the text for my message this morning, you and I often grow weary from toiling with no results. And when we are unsuccessful, that is not a good feeling. And we would love to fish with dynamite, wouldn't we? I, I mean, seriously, you and I want to be successful. And if the cure was, figuratively speaking, lighting a stick of dynamite and actually throwing it and we would get the results that we desired, who wouldn't do that? Who wouldn't want that? Yet we know it's wrong. We know it's wrong. But the gospel lesson appointed for this morning is a word of God that encourages all who labor but have no success. Success, that is, according to their desires or according to their hopes. Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. Those are the words that were spoken to Jesus. And those are the words that are spoken and thought of by many people, not only unsuccessful fishermen, many weary workers. I mean, Pastors. I mean, I can even tell you as your pastor that there have been in our days where it's like, oh Lord, what, what's the use? I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm fishing, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm casting away, but I'm, I'm really not seeing any results, or at least the results that I would like to see, along with so many others, like teachers and missionaries, and even for us as members of this body of Christ, called St. Luke. We watch the days, the weeks, and the months go by, and years, as they come and go, with seemingly nothing accomplished. I, I, I mean, have you ever felt that way? If you have, raise your hand. Okay. 
Okay, some of you are doing it. Others of you are afraid because you know that if you raise your hand, sometimes I call on you. (laughs) Because that's just who I am and, and how I do things. There's a story told about a missionary that sailed from Liverpool to serve Christ in Africa. And changing ships at a place, he boarded a ferry to make his way to a disease-ridden territory where he would devote his entire life. He was going there with the intent of spending the rest of his natural-born days sharing the love of God through Jesus Christ up until his dying day. And as he changed vessels, he ran into a cynical older missionary looking sternly at him and said, this is his quote, this is what he said, I have worked this area for years, faithfully preaching the law and the gospel. You will not get anywhere here. In fact, you are dead if you go to that place. And the devoted missionary to whom he was speaking responded, saying, I was dead before I ever sailed from Liverpool. Now, you may remember he was specifically uh, using God's word in God helping him to understand that before he came to faith in Jesus, he was spiritually dead. And that's what he was saying to this older missionary. The missionary referred to a lot of what St. Paul has recorded in his epistles. And this is the life to which you and I have been called in being fishers of men. Yet many become weary from seeing few results. I mean, heard it, and the temptation is real, and we need to let's just be very honest and upfront about it in regard to the various aspects of ministry here, primarily at St. Luke. Let's just name some of them the high school breakfast, our preschool, which, by the way, you should know is bursting at the seams right now, which is, again, and we just interviewed some some very beautiful women to become new preschool teachers, and and God is just blessing away. The Redwood Gospel Mission, Stephen Ministry. Anybody remember what Stephen Ministry is? Stephen Ministry is about lay people that are specifically trained with 50 hours of training to be able to come alongside someone who is having difficulty in life to become a, a confidant, if you will, And so those who are in need are called care receivers, and the people that are Stephen ministers are caregivers, and to spend time with those people regularly during the week and and to pray with them and to pray for them. Then we have fish, the food pantry, which St. Luke has been involved in for years, the New World Ballet, which we've had now for a couple of years, Financial Peace University, the basketball camp, prayer warriors. We've got these things that have been part of our DNA here at St. Luke for a very long time. But you know what? Where's the fruit? Where's the fruit of our labors? I mean, how many of you, wouldn't it be great if all of those young people from high school breakfast, as an example, would be in Worship with us next Sunday in the pews. Wouldn't that be great? Because you know what? That's what success is all about. Or is it? Because I'll tell you one thing right now. If we, Hildred, how many are we getting right now? 50 to 70? 50 to 70 teenagers Monday through Friday during school coming for breakfast. What if they all showed up or a good number of them Next Sunday, would we be ready for them? And would that be what you and I, from the world's perspective, would that be what success looks like? I, had, I you know, I, and, and I'm bringing this up because just using picking on high school breakfast for a while, which we've been St. Luke has been doing for what twenty years, seventeen years. We've had some people, and the temptation is real. We need to shut that down because you know what? Those young people aren't coming in to worship on Sunday mornings, and they're not joining our congregations. We need to 
let that go. And, and I'm just picking on high school breakfast as an example because you can say this about all the, the other ministries that I named and also our preschool with all of those young families. You see, sometimes we can be tempted to become so weary from seeing few results or the results that we think should happen. Many of us as Christians, we go through these stages of waning hope, of failure, of disappointment, of despondency, until, like the elderly missionary, reach despair. Now, I, I really want you to think about that because I, this gospel lesson that we are being blessed with, you know, I, I've, I've called it cast away. You know, and, and I love because that, in a nutshell, in Jesus calling his disciples then as he's calling us today to be fishers of men, he's, he's challenging us and saying, you know what, cast away, cast away. And just keep casting away. I mean, he calls us to fish with him and for him. Even though we may not be seeing the success or the fruit of our labors the way that we would desire. And you know exactly what I'm saying. And how often Satan is always going to be in the mix and he's going to try to infuse fear, discouragement, and everyday responsibilities that interfere with us casting away and fishing for people. I mean, Jesus set the example. Now, you might say, well, he, pastor, he's the son of God. Out loud, can't, can't ever measure up to him. Well, that's true, but remember, he was not only God, but he was man too, wrapped up into one. And so he definitely sets us an example. I mean, he, he left the glory of heaven to come down to earth to fish in the sea of sinners, to seek and save the lost. He faced the temptations, too, by the devil and a rejection by his own people. Remember, his, his own people, his hometown of Nazareth, they rejected him, didn't want to have anything to do with him. Who, who in the world does this think he is this Jesus but he carried out his father's mission because that's what his life was all about and he fulfilled the mission by what by suffering and dying on his cross and by victoriously rising from the dead paying for the sin of the whole world including the sin of our half-hearted evangelism I want you to Listen to what Paul says about Jesus in Philippians. He says this, Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing. Made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Yes, Jesus gives us much, much more than just being an example. It's through his word through our remembering that we are baptized and whenever we come to the Lord's Supper, that he promises to give us his strength. See, because you and I can't do it on our own. No way, no how. Have power from on high. And that's what we have. God infusing into us through word and the sacraments the power. That awesome power of his, the power of the gospel, the good news of salvation in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And if we were left on our own, oh, we would be in so much trouble. I mean, we would be out there in the water and we would sink, we would drown. But what has God done? He has cast out to us the life preserver of his son and he has firmly fastened that life preserver around us and what does he do? He pulls us in. 
and he saves us. So we are, as Paul says it, we are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors because of God's power, his love for us. And yet, yes, there will be some days, and there are days, when we don't feel like fishing for lost souls, right? I mean, even for me, a pastor. I mean, can you believe it? A pastor saying, you know, there's days that I, I don't feel like casting away. And we may not want to excel in the gifts that St. Paul is talking about in our epistle lesson. We may even dare to feel, as Peter did in our gospel, that nothing was being accomplished, so he, we might as well give up. Have, have you ever felt like giving up? You don't need to raise your hand. been there, done that. But you know the one thing that I always remember or remind myself of when I'm tempted to give up? Wait a minute. My Lord never gave up. He, he never threw the towel in on me. And I know he would not want for me to do that either. As long as I are, are blessed with breath, with being alive in this world, even though we may not see the fruit of our labors, and Scripture says, you know, one is appointed to sow, the other one will reap, even though we may not see the success or the successes that we would like to see, we're still casting away and we're sowing the seed and sharing the love of Jesus with as many people as we possibly can where the fruit may not be born or seen until years and years from now. What would Jesus have you to do? What would he have me to do? He would have us to invest our life in fishing for people. And let me just lay it on your hearts. The simplest way to do that to do it verbally, you can do it through your life, through your service, but if you ever have the chance to just simply verbalize it and somebody might say, what's the most, or ask you, what's the most important thing in your life? What is your objective, your meaning? What gives you meaning and purpose and significance in life? There's a simple one-word answer. And the answer is what? Jesus. Jesus. If you want to know what makes me tick, if you want to know what gives me meaning and purpose and significance, he's got a name. And his name is Jesus. Cast away in his name. Amen.